Good morning. This April, we are centering worship around refrigerator prayers, while we encourage each other to have an active prayer life in the midst of trials. This month, we want to invite everyone to take part in our refrigerator prayer challenge, which is when each week the pastor will post a picture of the prayer for the upcoming Sunday, and we will invite everyone to either print that picture out, draw another design of it, or do something else creative, post it on your refrigerator, and then post that picture on Facebook. This week, we also want to show you our favorite refrigerator prayer from last Sunday, which was made by the Zeidner family. As we come together this Easter morning, let's begin to worship with song. Tree planted by the water, we never will run. 
Okay, we want to take a few moments to say hi to each other. This morning I have my daughter Lily hoping to lead worship. My daughter Eva is behind the camera. And I also wanted to say a special thanks to all the people who have helped put music together for this Easter Sunday and also to the Zeidner family for running the tech side of things. So for everyone on Facebook, you may now say hello to everyone by posting a comment. And last week we encouraged everyone to uh, get out of your pajamas and put on your real best Easter clothes for this morning's worship. Uh, so for everyone who has done that, we want to encourage you to, at this time, go ahead and post your pictures of yourself in your Easter clothes uh, while we say hello and, and greet each other. Mays Manor, our mission is to be a church where people actually live like Jesus. So, for this day of resurrection, since we are not able to be together in person, we have put together a video of people from our church still celebrating their new life in Christ doing a traditional Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is 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 risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is 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 risen indeed. At this time, we will have our children's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for staying with us during these challenging times, and we pray that you'll continue keeping the children in your creation healthy, happy, and safe. All God's children said, Amen. At this time, let's take a few moments to collect our thoughts and lift up the prayers of the people. For everyone on Facebook, you may now post your prayers, but please remember to leave out people's last names for privacy reasons. First, let's take some time to think about things that we have seen in the news in this past week that give us anxiety and fear. Lift those prayers up to God and let those worries go. Now, picture the people who you know who are in some special need of God's grace for whatever reason that may be. And lift those prayers up to God and let those worries go. Finally, let's take some time to think about the good things, the blessings, the, the little mercies that we receive, all the things we have to be thankful for. And let us lift those praises up to God. God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun you have raised Jesus Christ, and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all your gifts of new life. Especially, we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives, 
for loyalty and love of friends and family, for the newborn and for those now in your eternal home, for the renewal of nature, and for the continuing witness of the Church of Christ. God of eternity, you are present with us in Christ's rising from the dead, and you persist in lifting us to new life in him. We bring to you our prayers for this world in need of resurrection. Especially we pray for nations and peoples in strife, for the poor and impoverished, at home and abroad, for those we know in particular circumstances of distress, for the diseased and the dying, and for all who follow the risen Christ. These things we ask in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This time we will have the reading of the written word. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary! She turned to him and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. At this time, we will be receiving our tithes and offerings. We do want to encourage everyone to continue to support the church uh, during this season. So if you want to give online, you can go to mazemanorumc.org slash give. Or if you want to give by check, you can go ahead and uh, take these few moments to write your check and get it in an envelope and have it ready. Uh, so for all of us now, let's take a few moments to listen to our offering song.
The Word of God is alive and active among us. Amen? Earlier this week, I visited the church building. I had a few supplies I needed to pick up to be able to continue to work from home. And I was planning to make kind of a quick trip just to get in and pick them up and, and get out. Um, but when I got to the church, everything was dark and quiet. It was kind of an eerie feeling, and so I stopped for a moment to look around. Now, while I did that, what I found was that it was kind of a, a, an apocalyptic feeling in the church because there were places around the building where it was obvious that we had been working on things and doing things, and then all of a sudden we just sort of walked away from them um, when we had to shut everything down uh, almost a month ago. And so I took some pictures of some of the places that I saw while I was there. There was the walk-in closet that we had prepped and ready for the March uh, Maze Manor Market. And now we have the clothes hanging and waiting, um, but we're not able to go inside. The preschool, which is usually full of kids and noise and fun and all kinds of things during the day, has no one inside and is quiet. On the last Sunday that we were together, we were uh, making plans for the Mystery Dinner Theater that was scheduled on March the 15th, and so we were selling tickets and getting ready for that. Um, and now the signs are still there, uh, but it turned out that March the 15th was the first Sunday when we weren't able to come together in person. There were prayer cards that we had signed to give to people, but never sent. The sanctuary was dark. In the fellowship hall, which normally would have been full of people for worship and for Friday Night Live's community egg hunt and all kinds of other activities, was empty. And as I walked through the church and took these pictures, there was this feeling of pain that I had because typically the church is so full of life. And that is especially true at Easter. Now this morning, as we come together, our scripture reading for today tells the story of the first Easter. The Gospel of John tells the story of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As we've been seeing over the course of this season of Lent, um, one of the things we learn in the Gospel is that Jesus is our servant, he is our savior, he is our teacher, he is our liberator, and he is our example. And yet, as we come to the end of the gospel, Jesus gets betrayed, arrested, and crucified. And then Jesus dies on the cross and is buried in a tomb with a stone rolled in front of it. John chapter 20 tells the story of the resurrection of Jesus and the first verse, and it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So Mary stood outside of the tomb, and then she sort of leaned in to take a look. And when she did, she saw two angels inside. And when she saw the angels, um, she asked where, what had happened to the body of Jesus, because it was nowhere to be found. And then verse 14 says, When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And I think her inability to recognize Jesus makes sense when you think about it, because for Mary, she was in this period of intense grief. And so there was just too much sadness. There was too much darkness. There was too much desperation. There was too much doubt, and there was too much pain for her to see who Jesus was. Then Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And so Jesus called her by her name, and then she sees Jesus. And that sets up the verse that I want to concentrate on today, which is verse 18. In verse 18 it says, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. 
And she told them that he had said these things to her. Now, I love this verse here where she says, I have seen the Lord. You know, finally, Mary looks beyond the pain, and when she does, she sees that she is face to face with Jesus. So this morning, I want to ask you, can you see Jesus? Can you see Jesus this Easter? You know, Easter is usually the single most celebratory Sunday of the year. It's such a big celebration, we really take an entire week to do it. You know, we start on Palm Sunday when we wave the palm branches. Uh, the celebration continues through the week when we do Maundy Thursday and we share in Holy Communion. Uh, you know, normally we would also get together and do an egg hunt where we go around and, and hunt for eggs with the kids and the adults too. And then finally we come together for the Day of Resurrection. And Easter Sunday is this day of forgiveness, it is this day of faith, it is this day of hope and light and joy. So it is a Sunday full of good stuff, and, and normally everybody seems to be able to see Jesus at Easter. But this Easter, the church building is dark and empty. So can you see Jesus in the world today. This week I have been trying to look beyond the pain in order to see Jesus. And as I've done this, I've requested help from, from other people online. I invited people to, to send me pictures of things that give them hope and let them see God at work in the world. And I wanted to share some of the pictures that I've collected through this week um, that, that are pictures of God at work in the world. So this first picture was sent to me by Peggy, um, and it is a picture of the cross from last year's Easter. Sunday. So you have the, the cross itself with the, the, with, with the white cloth over it and then the crown of thorns on top and you can even see the lilies underneath it. And so, so, so it reminds us of the joy of celebrating Easter in normal years. Next picture was sent to me by Jossie, and uh, she said that spring is one of the things that, uh, that, that, that gives her hope and a way that uh, she can see God at work in the world. And I, I know for me that's true. You know, spring gives me hope. Uh, spring also gives me allergies. Uh, but, but, but even with that being said, um, it, it's nice to see the flowers coming out and to be reminded that the world continues to turn, even with all of the things that are going on. In this picture of my, my daughter, Lori, and one of the reasons I see God at work in this picture is if you look at carefully down here towards the bottom, you'll see a, a cell phone sitting there. And the reason that phone is sitting there is because um, normally Lori gets visits from her grandmothers all the time, uh, but they're not able to come right now because they are staying home and isolated to, to try to keep safe. Um, but on the phone right here, um, one of her grandmas is actually reading her a bedtime story. And so that was something that, that, that gave me hope and where I could see God at work in the world. And uh, th this last week, my, my wife turned 40 years old, and, um, and my, my original plan for her 40th birthday was to set up some kind of surprise to, to get her back for when she had the entire church lie to me to get ready for a surprise birthday party for my birthday um, when, when I turned 40. But, of course, that wasn't in the cards to do any kind of big gathering. Um, so, so instead, we had kind of a, a low-key, uh, calm celebration at home. Uh, but, but part of what I did getting ready for her birthday was flip through pictures, uh, you know, from various years to, to remember some of the things that we've done together. And I love this picture because, you know, here you have Lori with a pumpkin, and then you have Lily with a pumpkin, and then you have Eva with a pumpkin, and then you have Mary Ellen also with a pumpkin. And so, so, so it was kind of fun to go back and to, to see the pictures and to, to remember the things that we have done as the years have gone on. Now, the last picture I wanted to share this morning is a picture that uh, my, my mom sent uh, to me when I was collecting pictures. And this is a picture of her refrigerator that, that is full of pictures of various people that she knows. Um, and she sent a note with it that said that the people that she knows um, give her hope and that they are ways that she can see God at work in the world. I think for me, I wanted to second the thought that she had there because I, I, I think for me, more than anywhere else in the world, I see Jesus in people. 
Jesus does not live in a building. Jesus will not be buried by a pandemic. Jesus will not be found in a tomb. Because Jesus is alive in you. And that takes us into the final question that I want to ask you this morning, which is, can people see Jesus in you? And that question guides us into uh, what will be our refrigerator prayer for this week. Now, I do want to say that it was hard for me to select a single prayer to be our refrigerator prayer for Easter because Easter is such a big Sunday with so many things going on. Um, and and a, a, as I kind of thought and reflected on different prayers that we could use, the one that I kept coming back to was the prayer of St. Francis. And, and the reason that I was brought back to it is because I, I believe that this prayer, um, more than, 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 than most any other, um, does a really good job of reflecting and capturing the life the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And so this week I have been sitting with the prayer of St. Francis. And so what I've been doing is starting at the beginning of the prayer, which says, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. And I found as I sat with this prayer for just a few minutes each day that, that one of the things I, I found myself doing was changing the words around a little bit. You know, here he says, where there is injury pardon, um, where there is doubt faith. And I, I found myself changing that, that, the wording just a bit, to ask myself, where is their pain? Where is their doubt? Where is their desperation? Where is their darkness? Where is their sadness? And how can I let people see Jesus in me? Then I move on to the next part of the prayer, which says, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And I believe that prayer just captures the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. So this morning I want to invite you to rise with Jesus. When you look around at the world today, you will see places that are dark and empty. But if you look beyond the pain, you will also see that you are standing face to face with Jesus. And this is Easter. Today we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And Jesus came into this world not to be served, but to serve. And Jesus came to show us the way of salvation. Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Jesus came to set us free from the darkness of sin and death. Jesus came to give us the example of life. And Jesus is alive in you. So you do not need a fellowship hall to celebrate Easter. You do not need a sanctuary to celebrate Easter. You do not need any building to celebrate Easter. Just let Jesus live in you. And let us pray. Lord, we give thanks to you for the day of resurrection. 
We confess to you that there are many times in our lives when we get caught up in the doubt and the darkness and the desperation of this world. And yet, as we join together on this Easter morning, we are filled with your light. We are filled with your hope. We are filled with your joy, and so we invite you today to fill us with the Spirit of Jesus, that he will be alive in us, and so that we can be your light into this world. These things we ask in the name of Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. So now let's celebrate the God of the resurrection with a song. Now, let us trust in God, let us live like Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let Jesus be alive in you. Amen. All right, so now for everyone, let's go ahead and jump on to Facebook to say your goodbyes. And also for everyone that has a refrigerator prayer, you may go ahead and post those pictures. And remember, the church is not a building, the church is the people. So even though our building may be closed, the church is always open. Happy Easter.